Okay, I think <coughs> we can start. Okay, welcome back, everybody, uh, for the afternoon session. So we have two more presentations. First, I will start. I will tell you about Digirati, and then Kuna will continue uh, with Web, web 2.0 and related <laughs> topics. And then we will have some time for your gr group work, so working on your dream solution for youth eat participation, and then we are off to our evening activities. <laughs> but I will now tell you about the Digirati platform. We also call it Virtual Council. That's the term we have been using in English. And it's basically a digital citizen council aimed for young people. And I will tell you a little bit about our approach in how we uh, did the design uh, from in our research fields in human technology interaction. And then I will uh, mainly tell some, some uh, phases in there and some examples about the prototype we worked on. And then I will show a couple screenshots from the what's the current version of Digirati. But let's start with the, the approach that we usually follow in human technology interaction. It's this process. You can there is also a, an ISO standard uh, created for this process. So it's called Human Centered Design, HCD. And it has these four main steps. Uh, and everything starts by understanding the, the user and the what are the, like, who, who is the user in the first place? So who, for who are we designing this uh, service or this, this uh, product? So understanding the, who, is our, uh, who are our main users, identifying them in this case, they are, for example, young people, obviously. They are the officials in the, in the municipalities or in the government. And but they can be other people like uh, like teachers, for example, or, or youth workers, for example. You, I would say that definitely you people could be our target users in in Digirati case also. Okay, and then we need to understand what are the needs of these people who are going to use this service. How how we can support them in their needs. What kind of challenges they have. We can aim to to solve with this digital solution. And then context refers, for example, the the environment where they will this. Uh, product will be used and uh, it can r relate also the social context or technological context and so on. Like are there other people utilizing the same service at the same time? So definitely in this kind of services the social context has a uh, really big impact also for the experience that young people get from using it. And then we specify the user requirements after we you do this user research, so which is the two first steps. User research can include like interviewing people, uh, running workshops, basically collecting data in many different way, ways, doing surveys and so on. And I will, I will show you a couple examples what we did in a uh, Digirati design process. Then there's the design and develop uh, phase where you co-design uh, different solutions and uh, you make different prototypes of different levels. You just start by sketching some pictures of what it would look like, describing okay, what's the basically what is the idea of this service? That's something that you are you are going to I I will hope to see tomorrow. That's just a de description. What is the idea of this service? What people can do with it? And then you take the design in the next and next phases. You can create even paper prototypes and some interactive prototypes, and then. Uh, develop the final solution, like web service in, in our case with the Digirat. And then there's the evaluation parts is where we test this prototype or the solution we have. So we ask feedback from the those end users we have identified in the first phase. So we go with to the young people and say, okay, here's our proposal, what do you think about it? What works, what doesn't? So And the whole, the whole process is iterative, so we always go to the previous phase and what we have learned, and we make a new design, and then we go back to, back to the previous phase and, phase, and so on. So this is the human-centered design process in a nutshell. And the Digirati, where it all started, uh, we had this aim that we want to create a web service that supports the communication between young people and the officials. And in our case, we defined the young people to, to be people 16 to 25 years old. And the officials can be legislators, hearing representatives in the government positions, in and supporting this communication in societal matters. And it, it was supposed to be open platform available also to be used for municipalities and NGOs. So that we are, 
our dream was that we create this platform and basically anybody can use it who wants to organize these kind of citizen councils in the uh, internet in Finland context. And the councils should discuss uh, shared topics. Uh, so the participants get a topic and they will discuss in the given time frame. And the aim is to write this final statement. Then like, uh, like there can be lots of discussion uh, a very even kind of wild discussion and then at the end it should be a kind of concise statement that this is what this council thinks about this matter and then this final statement can be taken then forward to the people who should hear about this topic. And some design goals we described at the beginning that we aim to create motivating and easy to use digital channels for all youth to share opinions and discuss these societal matters and also get positive experiences from the participation. It should be efficient and na nationwide channel for the officials, that is the second user group or main user group, to hear about young people's uh, uh, ideas and thoughts, and then also support societal participation on national level, but on also on local level. So as I said, the idea was that municipalities could also utilize this kind of service. Here is an over overview of the design process. So it started already in 2018 and we started the first user research. We ha have shown some uh, findings already. So we started with just trying to understand, okay, what are the barriers for young people to, for, to participate in societal discussions, basically like just learning about the current situation and so on. So we did first user studies there in the 2018 and then we continued on 19 and there are some references. You can check them out. There, everything is on uh, the uh, All Youth website. So later we you get the. I think we will share these slides with you all also. So then we started working on the first version of the prototype. We continued our user research. Then we had the first uh, like functional prototype pilot testing in 2019, and then it was iterative. Then we got the collaborators jumped in when we had the functional prototype. Uh, City of Tampere, also Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Justice. Ministry of Justice was the like our main collaborator in this Digirati process, and also the Red Cross uh, safe houses. They were really active in like they were at the same time looking how they could support young people in Finland for societal participation in digital uh, environment, especially. So they were really actively involved in the testing this service with their their uh, like uh, customers, the young people who are in the safe houses. So they had the contacts to young people, so it was really beneficial collaboration. So they, they helped us a lot in, in evaluating the service and collecting feedback. And then in 2022, there was this kind of handover, so we finished uh, developing the prototype with our research team, and we gave the ball to the Ministry of Justice, so they were happy with the process, so and they decided that they will continue the work. And Currently, it's, it is a national service available in their Ministry of Justice website, so one, one that is available for, for people in Finland. And we are still continuing the development, so we have big, big plans, lots of work still to do, but we have a functional uh, service at the moment, and we are, it's currently being used by, by many of our collaborators. I will show some couple pictures about it later. Here is just an example, like we, we had this, uh, go back one slide. No, okay, you just need to press harder, it works better, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we had these workshops here at the 2018, and it basically we, we had a concept idea, we, we had the different scenarios we described, and this is how young person could use this service. We went to the schools, we met uh, young people in this uh, need, uh, groups and different municipal workshop groups, so people, young people in different life situations and backgrounds, and we showed like sen these scenarios and we asked their feedback uh, in this this workshop. And one of the tools was this kind of uh, storyboards, what we call them like cartoons. So like, okay, there's a person using this service, and this is what happens. And great, yeah. Then at the end, there's they are happy and something was solved and so on. So this was just a very simple way to show the idea for the participants and we haven't coded anything at this point. We didn't have to code. We just have the idea, no programming required. And the idea is with this that if you use this kind of methods then you don't need to if, if nobody likes the idea then you can scrap it. 
and you didn't waste any resources on actually developing it further. But we got uh, lots of good feedback and improvement ideas in general the feedback was positive but of course there were also also uh, questions. I Before I ask uh, like who had heard the word gamification like that was one thing that divided opinions a lot so like we introduced some gamification ideas for the for the uh, uh, for the for the storyboard or the how this could be used but uh, like some people were afraid that people just come there to collect points or or to get some batches or something like that and not being interested into the actual discussions and the topics that should be the important thing and some of the young people thought it it sounds awesome yes i want to try this but but then we ended up that we don't include much gamification, like some statistic information, like that was the thing that we thought that would be relevant and it's not mandatory to. If you are not interested, you don't have to uh, follow the statistics. But in general, it seems that everybody likes to watch out those statistics and, and uh, what's going on in the system, like what was the time people were active in the councils, for example, something like that. Okay, so then here is the like the uh, idea of how the um, council would work. Th so this is from the officials' perspective. Like we thought that that's like the uh, the more realistic to start with. So we had had also an other idea that the young people would initiate the councils and gather other young people there to discuss, and then they would share the final statement to officials. But this was more like realistic, especially when there was no user base yet. So that the council is created first by the official from the government, so they define like oh, what is the discussion topic and what's the schedule. Usually it, w it was like uh, one week, two weeks was when the council was open and people could participate there anytime they wanted uh, from their home. Then they upload materials to support discussion, so it was PDF files basically that was supported in the prototype. Then there is this final statement question, so in this prototype we had some questions at the end of the council that that everybody answered, like they had discussed this topic, uh, but then they answered these questions at the end of the council to provide their like concise ideas of this topic. And then they can invite additional discussions to, uh, or, or the facilitators to these discussions. Then the participants are invited when the council is ready, so they are invited by email and they get the password to, to join in into the platform. Then there's the discussion and uh, participants and facilitators basically discussed there in the centers. So this was uh, uh, like a chat, basically. So the and it was anonymous. So you used uh, you had your nickname, and then you discussed their writing messages, basically. Uh, the uh, Slack, if you know Slack, that was pretty close of the the idea we had for this. And then after discussion, there's the final statements, and this can be like one of the participants who writes the final statement, or it can be the some facilitator who likes puts everything together and then uh, the participants have a possibility to comment the final statement and uh, and th then the idea our idea was that those comments would also be taken together with the final statement so if somebody disagrees that kind of metadata would be included in the statement when it's taken forward and that's the yeah part five and then what we always highlighted there that it's really impo important that the participants hear what happens after their participation because we found out in the initial studies that this <laughs> that it's very important for motivation that young people can see that it had some kind of impact why would they participate like if they one week discussion and they nev then they never heard what happened so it's important that the official or facilitators they give some kind of feedback to the participants after the after they have taken their final statement forward. So that was something we always highlighted with the, with the design. Uh, here are some couple screenshots from the prototype that we created. So this is the version we created with the, our research team. So basically there was, this is the front page and there are like these are the currently ongoing or, or already finished uh, like a discussions or these uh, councils. And then this doesn't work. Okay, okay. Here's the front page. If you open one of the councils, then there is. This is really simplified. So there is like a time frame when it's open and when it will be closed, and some background information and description. And then there are the latest messages here on the right side. 
and then this is the discussion view itself. So really simple chat view, so you can read and, uh, and write messages and then you can answer to others' messages and we also had this simple thumb up, thumb down and then there was the star was, the idea was that you can compliment somebody if they made a good argument. You can disagree with the argument, but if you think it was well written, you can give the star for that. So really, really simple like these kind of activities. And one of the idea here was that if there's a young person who doesn't want to write comments there or is afraid, for example, in the Red Cross, uh, like these young people, what they had, they some of them just came for the first council to follow what's going on there, but they didn't want to participate. And then on the next council, they already started to write something. So, but they, you can always put a thumb up if you don't want to write. So that's already a participation. So we try to put the threshold as low as possible here for the participation. And the other really important thing was this, that it's a safe environment. So there are these facilitators all the time. They're following the discussion and then they can block people. They can delete messages and so on. Because we have been talking about this hate speech and afraid that people, young people are afraid of harassment and so on. So it was really highlighted that this should be a safe environment to provide your comments. And some feedback we, we collected from the, this is from the prototype version. So positive was that it was easy to use, uh, fresh and so on. The threshold was very low for the discussion and you could participate from your home. And uh, comments were answered properly and it was felt that it was a safe environment, which was exactly we were what we were aiming for. And there's no need to out uh, find out who this matter should be forwarded to. So young people just participate, but they don't need to know any politicians or officials that who they actually should know about this matter, but it was taken care of by the organizers. And also important to hear what you influenced and what was the impact of your participation. So as I already mentioned this, what somebody also said from the participants, and we highlighted also that what happens after your participation. So it's important to keep the feedback loop working. And some development needs of course, always that activating and motivating the discussions can be challenging. This is always, I think, a challenge. There is no magic wand to make young people to be active in these kind of services. You can try to do it, but it doesn't always succeed. And a long list of different features, and we have lots of ideas. There could be voting, there could be like video for the organizer, but it would be only one way so that it would be still anonymous for the participants and so on. Lots of ideas that we couldn't implement during our research project. And also this, that this was a website, so of course if it was a mobile application it would be easier to just open it and use it on the, on the go. So that would provide some, some new value for the young people. Okay, and today the Digirat is available in this address, so if you want you can go and check what it looks like. It's only in, in Finnish unfortunately, and Swedish, if you know Swedish, then uh, that's also a possibility, but no other languages at the moment. And I will just show a couple screenshots to sum up my, my presentation. So this is the current front page for Digirati, and at the top there, there is no Digirati yet, because this is still, it's still a prototype, although it's already published, but we are still working on it, but there are links to other of these democracy services offered by the government at the moment. And uh, pretty much the same idea, so there is, uh, you can search different councils and then there are like currently ongoing councils, but you can then uh, join. Uh, at the moment you can only be invited to these councils, but we are also working on the idea that you could, you could uh, say that I'm interested in this topic, can I join this council? So that and for example, that if you have some tax, for example, that I'm investment interested in nature, for example. And then if there is an open council where the topic is related to nature, then you could get a, like a notification that, okay, there's council available, do you want to join? So that kind of features. But of course, that requires that we have the user base uh, registered there for the, for the council or this uh, service in general. And then just uh, one more screenshot about the actual discussion view. So this is, there's the box that where you can write your comment and then you can add a picture there. And then there are some, well, there's just some information that you are currently registered as the main user. 
and then you can hide your name and organization. But for the young young person, of course, those are not not visible. And then the discussion itself is quite similar. Wha the main difference we made in this the, the prototype was it resembled kind of this kind of chat uh, platform like WhatsApp or a Slack. But then we noticed that it's more common for young people to write longer messages uh, less often. So we thought that this kind of like uh, discussion forum style would be more beneficial and easier to, easier to follow when there are longer messages. So we will get these this kind of threads there and then, then you could then, for example, close the thread if there are lots of text and the thread would start a new topic. Okay, and then at the moment there is only one one other subpage that is the, the materials that are provided to you, like uh, links to different websites or PDF files, so like material you should read before you start the council uh, and the discussion there. And then, the, yeah, the third link up is about or, or for the organizers to control it. Oh yeah, I had one, one more uh, slide here. The, uh, this, i this is data collected by my colleague uh, or our colleague Henna Juusola from All Youth Project. So she interviewed and also participated as a facilitator in one of the one of the councils. I think it was Ministry of uh, what was the? Do you recall what ministry was it? Not education, but but the forestry. Yes, yes, Minister of Forestry and and uh, in Finland. So they organized one council there and and. Uh, Henna was a facilitator in that, and there were also two more facilitators, and so she interviewed them, and she just some general views of the current version uh, and e-participation in general was discussed here. And uh, what to highlight here? Well, maybe ab about the sticky writing rate. There are some general notions about e-participation that they discussed, but then related to the is is that it's simple, simple concept, relatively easy to use, but it's still like uh, kind of adult-led, and there's strongly facilitator like uh, emphasis there that they they uh, like uh, work and activate young people to participate and discuss. And it's one relevant form for hearings and youth consultations. Accessibility is still like we, we say at the, uh, or it is stated in the in the Digirati that it's not currently accessible yet. We, there are still aspects that need to be worked on, on that to make it accessible. For example, like how it how well it works when you are using the screen reader uh, application. For example, it's not completely yet uh, working in all all the uh, views on it. Uh, anonymity was thought good, but of course there in the anonymity there are the, like the two sides that you don't know. Like, and sometimes it would be nice to know, for example, in what areas in Finland these participants are from. Um, but then that anonymity is also very important to make the it uh, the safe environment for young people. And then lastly, the topic is really important. So if the topic is interesting for young people, of course the chances for to getting the participants is higher. And uh, one more notion, what I thought was really, really great during this process uh, of, of Digirati or the whole project was this uh, novel type of collaboration that was was started between the muni or, or these NGOs, like the Red Cross, for example, and the Ministry of Justice and other ministries, that they started to collaborate, and we are there as uh, research participants collaborating with them. That these NGOs, they have contacts to young people, they can reach them, and then the ministries, they have the need to find these young people, that they don't have the, all the means to reach those people. So we work, or they work in together to get the uh, young people to participate in these councils, and also to ask for young people that what kind of topics they would like to bring up and uh, to be organized as, of, as these kind of citizen councils. So this is uh, like a new, and uh, to my understanding, haven't happened before, in, at least in Finland, on this level, that they, these two, two uh, stakeholder groups work together for the same goal. Okay, but now if you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to answer. And after that, we will move to Gunas' presentation. Yeah. Okay, um, 
first of all, I'm glad you said that it's really a brilliant idea and I think nothing but good can come out of this. Um, I just have some questions slash concerns regarding uh, the execution of the idea from my perspective. So do the discussions uh, happen face to face and how are the participants selected in the council? That's one of my questions. Yeah, no, there is no like video connection. On the, so the participant don't see each other. It's, uh, everything happens on the online in the website. So, so as anonymously. So, so in a written form, basically. It's like a chat forum, so you could say. Uh, anyone can write whatever they want in that platform, right? Yeah, the participants who are like invited to the, and they have joined into yeah, the council. I mean yeah, it, it, uh, it depends uh, like, uh, well, in practice, it happens that the participants get a password in email and then they join the website and then they join the specific council with that password. But le basically, it's up to the organizers to decide like, okay, how can they reach the participants? And is it like, let's say it can be like a uh, school class, for example, if that's they think that's a good sample or it can be more open. Usually it's like specific area in Finland, like some specific municipality. And who wants to, to participate, they just like are accepted. There are no criteria for someone to participate in uh, the discussion. Well, that's up to the organizers. If they have some specific criteria, they have to state that when they are looking for the for the participants. Okay. But and that's but 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 definitely that's if you think that it's kind of like an open council that anybody can participate, then of course there is the challenge that we can't be sure are they people who they say they are. They can be like some adults just there writing. If you well, it's in the same like I in the Facebook, you can't be sure that are these people who they they have made the profile. So that's the downside with the going with anonymity. And we had lots of discussion about this, that if we want to recognize the young people, how can we do that? They don't have bank accounts, maybe we can't use that. They might have some, uh, like there are services at the pri uh, primary schools that you can use for recognizing people. But mm -hmm. then there's the problem, the more difficult you make it for young people to just to register in this kind of service, the less people you will get in there. So we try again try to keep the threshold as uh, low as possible in that sense. Uh, that's uh, good to, to clarify because, like, my next maybe question is that um, when you have the participants and the discussion is ready to, to happen, does the, the government of does some government officials decide the closing statements? Uh, and what happens after the closing statement is um, like has yeah. happened? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, Usually it should be thought before the council starts that, okay, for who are we going to provide these statements? Some of them has gone to newspapers and some on, on the different officials in the government sector. So I, it should be decided first, of course. And, the, and then the also who writes the final statements? Usually it's the person who invites the council together. But also, we in when we developed the prototype, we asked that some of the participants for the young people to act as kind of chairperson in the in the, and they would also be uh, responsible of summarizing the discussions to the statement. So it's again up to the organizers who they want to write the statement. But also, what is important is that the participants have possibility to read it and comment on it before it is taken forward. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, what I was going to say because. Uh, statement happens after the discussion is over, maybe the organizer or the person who, who, who decides to, to, to make the final statement, uh, maybe he can change it and yes, yes. It happens. So yeah. I think it's good to, for participants to reevaluate it again, like collectively. So exactly. Yeah. That's an important step that they have. In practice, it can be that when the statement is written, everybody has left, nobody cares anymore, and nobody comes to check it anymore. So it's important. It would. <laughs> it's important that they would get some kind of email. Like at the current version, there is no like automatic emails or or messages sent to the phones. That okay, there's a statement is ready. Please go and check and comment on it. But that should be one step in the in the future. Somehow to reach the participants after the council is over. And like the last thing about anonymity, because yeah, uh, I think maybe you have already an idea on why this for some people can be like the downside. Uh, from what I understood, I think that, I don't believe that maybe anonymity 
um, forceful, forcefully would be a right thing because uh, some people, some uh, how can the bright young people uh, advance towards a political career if they are not appreciated and their name is not like uh, visible? Mm. Uh, I would think maybe someone could be anonymous if they want. Uh, so you can ask them if they want to be anonymous, and after they have made a statement, and then of course they can be anonymous. But if someone like wants to be seen, wants the uh, popularity, wants uh, his or her name to be to be heard, this I think this can help uh, for their career in other matters. Yeah, I think that's really really good viewpoint. That definitely, if some people would or uh, could want to see their name in there. That's a really, really good point. I think mandat <laughs> mandatory of the participants probably wouldn't like it to see. And, I, and like our test cases have been like with the Finnish Red Cross. So very like in vulnerable, vulnerable position, like young people being in a very unsafe position in a way or a difficult situation in their life. So they might not want to be identified but then those who want to be, definitely it could be possible. We have been, and I have been proposing that it it's, uh, depends on the topic of the council, that is it anonymous or should it be, or the participants discuss with their own names or it should be visible. So I think, again, it depends on the topic that how challenging it is, but if it's like some more generic, is it that it, it doesn't <laughs> danger the participants' uh, private life, for example. Yeah, so for definitely they could be. Yeah, yeah exactly. It should be. Option to be out there. I yeah. don't think it's about the topic. I think it's about the, the participant. Even if the topic is really sensitive, mm -hmm. maybe the participant wants, like, maybe he wants to, to be heard. He wants yeah. his name to be out there. Yeah. Maybe the majority, as you said, would not like that, but maybe some mm. people will. Yeah. So but that might be a good idea that after the statement has been referred, then you could like say that, okay, I want to be my name shown in the state with the statement that I participated. For some people it could be like, I don't know, you could want it to be on your CV or you can say that I participated, I've been really active and here's the link to the Digirati platform, you can see as a proof that I have participated. So yeah. might be important. Uh, yes. Do we need the microphone? Oh, it's simple. Okay. No, I w just want to know if in the platform uh, you said that there are uh, the possibility to put a nickname. Yeah. Right? So basically, if someone wants to put their own name, they just need to put their own name in the nickname. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, that's, that's the, the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Anonymity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone can choose the moment that they sign up on the platform if they mm. want to be anonymous or not. So that's true. That's true. That's I mean, possibility. It's pretty but then it to solve. But then it could be like, I. Like, I want my name to be seen on this discussion, but then on the other discussion, I don't want, so it maybe there could be an option that you can hide it, ah, yeah, or you can change it idea, afterwards yeah. or something it's like that. Hiding the nickname is just, yeah, yes. that's another good idea. Yeah, good design ideas. I will take these to the, <laughs> to the, to our uh, council. Yes, thank you. Any other comments? I don't know if I am much over time, but maybe it's time we work, move on to the Guna's presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can talk. I hate this device. I would talk. I would talk without it. But I hope you can hear me. So uh, I will not do a lecture. Maybe we can just talk. And uh, however, a few of few of slides there will be. Uh, so let's start with that uh, task. What I asked to do for you, and uh, as uh, it was promoted in programs that I am going to to talk about Web 2.0, and I would talk but I would like to hear from you. And uh, have you read something during? Very good. Then uh, can, you can, can we discuss now what it is, Web 2.0, and how it is different from Web 1.0, and how it relates to participation? Yeah? Who would start? I can see you smiling <laughs> and waving with your <laughs> head. Can you start something? Yeah, good, good. Google is meant for that reason. Uh, 
so basically, a website, Web uh, 2.0 is like an advanced um, uh, evolution of the first uh, internet version. So there are more complicated, let's say, uh, structures on the internet, like social media, user-generated content, and all these other things. While in the beginning, it was just JavaScript, so uh, mm -hmm. the languages of coding. Um, I think e-commerce was. Um, so. It's uh, Web uh, 1.0 was, uh, let's say, created in the 90s, 1990 until 2005, and then we have like this evolution of Web 2.0, which is from 2005 until now, and there is the two, uh, the 3.0 also version that is going to mm -hmm. be imminent, um, which is another evolution as well in uh, uh, structures of the internet that are available for users and also for how the users are interacting with internet. For example, uh, an interesting one that difference that I uh, found between the 2.0 and the 3.0 is the fact that in the 2.0 um, companies are using and monetizing on users' data, while in the 3.0 it's probably going to be users monetizing mm -hmm. with their own data, mm -hmm. which is very interesting, a different point of view. Uh, so that's that's what I read. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it will be so. Thank you so much. It was a very, very nice description. Who would like to add something? S yeah? Um, as far as I know, the uh, Web 1.0 is kind of based on no interaction, whereas in 2.0 you have a little bit more interaction with the users. And then more things like blogs and like some sort of um, user-generated experiences, so to say, were introduced as well. And I think this is the main difference between mm -hmm. them, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it is as a difference, but uh, is in our, uh, like our focus. How how we are approaching it is that it is much more participationary. Some uh, uh, did you want to add or who who else? No, no, but everyone is quite tired. Okay, so I will um, uh, try to tell oh, there, uh, a little bit about it. Uh, yes, uh, Web 2.0 uh, and why, why it is important for us. Uh, it is important because uh, with uh, arriving this concept uh, uh, in the academical environment discussing uh, digitalization and um, uh, internet, it um, uh, uh, started to be much more focused uh, on participation and uh, specifically on uh, digital uh, participation. And that one uh, thing that is uh, very important that really in, in these platforms uh, qua qualified as a web uh, 2.0, as a mostly social network sites, uh, that uh, difference in between information producers and consumers is blurred. Uh, if previously mostly that information was um, uh, created uh, like a one-way information where uh, users are consuming uh, information and not producing information, and in this info uh, 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 environment, which is called as a web 2.0, users are playing much more bigger role in producing content and uh, it creates uh, a lot of uh, a lot of new opportunities and a lot of new challenges and if we are thinking about opportunities in terms of participation uh, of course we are giving uh, totally new environment. We are giving a, a possibility to express ourselves. We are given opportunity to connect with each other and we are given opportunity to uh, disseminate information. It is not that we w would uh, uh, be only uh, users and producers. We are also disseminators of information. And uh, uh, actually what, uh, what is uh, happening is that uh, this environment demands totally new knowledge from so society and uh, uh, that knowledge uh, is uh, so important and that uh, 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 actually there is a need for totally new approaches how we are teaching how we are uh, behaving in this digital world and that the uh, environment provides uh, from media perspective uh, 
completely new uh, relationships with media because we are not any more media users. We are living in media. We are not consuming media, but we are living in media and everything is mediated. Uh, in all of our relationships uh, in between us as the individuals and other indiv individuals and groups and society, there is that presence of media. But how that media operates and how that infrastructure is built, uh, mostly society doesn't have understanding about it uh, and every individual doesn't have understanding also because educational system is not uh, uh, able to develop so fast as technologies are. Technologies are developing very, very fast, uh, not regulation, not educational system is able to, uh, to develop in such a speed and uh, that creates uh, a lot of uh, uh, digi digital inequalities. Uh, we were discussing today in that my weaknesses group uh, about digital gaps uh, and it is, it is reality which is uh, created uh, by these new uh, environments providing such a lot of opportunities but also providing a lot of risks. What happened uh, when this new uh, environment arrived in uh, in the academical world, I can uh, uh, I can tell it shortly from media perspective. I don't know if uh, some of you have heard about Henry Jenkins, but uh, in uh, media and communication science, he is perceived as a father of um, uh, participationary theories, and he created that concept of participationary culture. If you would see, uh, for example, Google Scholar, you would see that there are thousands and thousands of references to his uh, academical works about possibilities to participate, and actually he is very good on that. If you need to, to uh, discover uh, possibilities of this environment, he is uh, uh, very, very uh, 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 well informed and academically strong authority to whom uh, uh, read about uh, his ideas. And uh, actually, what he is telling is that, that participationary culture, what it brings, uh, it brings uh, uh, lower barriers for participation uh, because uh, uh, we know can uh, be involved in uh, different relationships with each other, uh, with uh, uh, policy makers, with uh, educators, much more different ways as it was uh, possible before. Uh, we can uh, uh, get strong support for uh, other people in this environment uh, uh, where um, uh, we are uh, spending most part of our life. Uh, we can uh, receive uh, informal mentorship from other people persons involved in this environment. Uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, believe that our contribution matters because when we are sharing some information, we are getting uh, immediate uh, feedback. Uh, uh, we can uh, uh, mm, uh, show our care about uh, others' opinions and, uh, and uh, see uh, how, uh, how our interrelationships with uh, them is going on in this environment. And uh, actually, similarly to him, uh, at the beginning in uh, 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 2000, uh, at the beginning of this uh, century, uh, actually there were uh, mm, a group of uh, uh, academics celebrating that participationary environment created by uh, social network sites. Uh, they were uh, uh, not, uh, not receiving a lot of critics at the beginning because uh, as uh, educators, as uh, policy makers, also academics are just starting to understand that environment, but uh, that uh, time uh, uh, bring much more critical, critical points of view and uh, that one, uh, one uh, significant uh, direction in uh, in academical world to uh, uh, approach this world now is uh, uh, called as a platform studies, and uh, they are uh, um, more focusing on whose aspects related to digital media uh, platforms as uh, owned by somebody and as a profit oriented and not so much society oriented and if we are uh, now checking for uh, for information who are m uh, main providers of uh, digital infrastructure for participation and also main uh, providers for uh, uh, 
information, public information available online, then we will see that there are uh, quite a few companies uh, as a Meta who owns uh, Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp and Alphabet who owns uh, Google and YouTube and Twitter and uh, ByteDance who owns TikTok and Microsoft who owns uh, uh, LinkedIn and who is uh, investing also in that new uh, platform chat GPT. Uh, actually, they are quite a few companies and uh, uh, if we would uh, uh, try to understand uh, uh, what is their influence in global economies, then we would see that actually it whose data-based businesses are now dominating that uh, uh, financial world being most influent uh, companies with, uh, with uh, the uh, best financial results in terms of uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, revenues and uh, how it was possible because uh, these companies actually provide very, very uh, well designed services for uh, users and whose uh, service what they are providing, uh, uh, it, uh, it is related, they are related uh, to information, they are providing uh, unlimited amount of uh, information for users, they are providing uh, entertainment, uh, they are providing knowledge and opinion and uh, different opportunities including also uh, participation, but at the same time time we need to understand that whose uh, digital media platforms what they are providing uh, are uh, created not because they want to provide society uh, possibilities to participate and to receive information their main aim is a profit and that is the main difference uh, comparing uh, Digirati, for example, uh, uh, with these platforms, that these platforms are profit-oriented and the uh, platform that was characterized by uh, Yari, it is uh, specifically created for uh, society and for needs of citizens, for needs uh, of uh, people and uh, that uh, understanding in uh, society about ways how those platforms operate, uh, understanding about attention economy, which is uh, a base for these platforms, that everything, uh, all operations managed by those platforms, actually they are created uh, as a uh, part of their business tool. Uh, if they are uh, providing a uh, possibility to uh, cooperate and share information, it is um, uh, created with a reason to keep uh, longer time users in these platforms because uh, they need uh, user attention later to sell that user attention to uh, uh, advertisers, of course, whose opportunities are very good and we need, need those op opportunities, but what we need, we need uh, also awareness about how these platforms operate. And that one of my main challenges at this moment is that uh, whose platforms operate uh, in a visible way, uh, society doesn't understand how platforms operate and uh, even it is uh, uh, quite a uh, uh, low level awareness uh, in uh, the regulatory environment about it. It is very, very recently since uh, we can see that in European level there are some activities. Maybe you have heard about Digital Services Act. It is going to regulate some things related to algorithms and uh, related to uh, transparency of algorithms, but whose algorithms are developed uh, uh, constantly and they are changing constantly and if we don't understand that main principles how platforms operate and that they are uh, they are profit oriented then it is uh, quite a challenging for us to be aware of uh, uh, how those platforms are uh, making influence on uh, on our world and uh, no, uh, the situation is that uh, uh, global communication and information space, uh, which should be a common good, it should be something that belongs to society, actually it is uh, uh, reduced to its uh, commercial dimension and uh, 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 in, in this situation access uh, to knowledge and uh, uh, knowledge about reality is uh, mediated by whose platforms and it is mediated uh, via 
content personalization, cont algorithmical personalization of everything that is accessible, and uh, that algorithmical personalization is based on principles not known for us. We don't know how it is happening. No, but nobody knows. They, they know because it is their business, and uh, somehow... Uh, at, at, at this situation, that this balance uh, in between platforms and society is uh, uh, quite uh, critical. And if we are talking uh, about democracy, a lot of uh, in this field of participation, then this dimension of uh, democracy is uh, not so often uh, mentioned also in academical literature. It is uh, just the uh, last, let's say, five years when an uh, academical environment started to talk about it. Uh, there are uh, some groups of uh, citizens trying to, to, to uh, make some, uh, some uh, 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 difference there. And uh, if you would check this uh, uh, forum uh, on uh, information and democracy, you would see that uh, experts from very different countries uh, uh, who has uh, experience in, uh, within this field, even uh, former uh, workers from uh, different platform companies or journalists or representatives of uh, uh, also on, uh, on from uh, from uh, different governments they are trying uh, trying to make a difference um, uh, there are uh, of course some uh, also some researchers i don't know if you have heard about uh, this author and if you have heard about a concept uh, of surveillance capitalism uh, there are different versions of digital capitalism platform capitalism sur uh, surveillance capitalism uh, in uh, in literature nowadays but that uh, main idea is that actually uh, in this way, uh, organized digital world, uh, that uh, uh, our data is uh, that capital, and we are giving our data for free, and it is what you mentioned, that maybe that Web uh, 3.0 will change that situation, but, uh, but uh, at this moment, uh, uh, we are where we are, and uh, uh, mm, we need to think uh, critically about the situation and uh, what is uh, one of uh, maybe biggest challenges in this field that uh, uh, services what they are providing, they are very, very, really very well designed and we need good services and, uh, and uh, that how, how to, in this situation uh, where uh, our critical thinking is uh, somehow influenced by uh, that uh, uh, opportunities, how still to raise critical thinking about uh, uh, these platform-related issues. And actually, the situation when uh, te new technologies are arriving, it is uh, not new. And uh, always when uh, new technologies arrive uh, in societies, there is a combination of hope and fear. And uh, maybe I represent that fear, but I hope that I represent more some like uh, trying to think rationally about what is uh, what is happening happening, but uh, uh, what uh, uh, actually what happened but what, what was happening in, in, in this, this world somehow that we were uh, so excited about opportunities and, and, and so keen on whose service that uh, as a society we were not able to develop this critical thinking, which is very important uh, in, in this field, critical thinking and, uh, and uh, awareness uh, of, uh, of how these platforms operate and uh, ability to understand this is kind of my concept about platform awareness which is uh, needed in uh, every field and uh, not only for users but also for uh, educators and uh, and uh, uh, policy makers uh, it is necessary to develop uh, uh, ability to understand biz business logics and uh, invisible operations such as tracking content moderation recommendation systems attention engineering of uh, algorithm drive and social media platforms. So that's it from my side. <laughs> I know that it sounds maybe quite dramatic, but uh, that's my approach to this issue. Any questions? Um, 
Wouldn't you say that the concept of Web 2.0 is outdated, considering that the Web 3.0 is the future nowadays, and I think we should prepare youth not for Web uh, 2.0, but actually for the future, which is Web, web 3.0, and we already know that it includes decentralized economy. It, uh, it's, it's putting actually a bigger emphasis on uh, personalization, as you mentioned. You didn't, yeah, and uh, also it, it includes VR technology and AR technology, which they are amazing tools to use, not only in social media, but also like uh, in even in the website of um, Digirat. Like mm -hmm. I think the, the tools of Web 3.0 could be much more helpful than the already known tools of uh, Web 2.0. So mm -hmm. we yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, I, I will tell what are my thoughts, and you were asking, shouldn't we uh, prepare young people for that? I think what we should do, we should open ourselves for uh, uh, that knowledge what young people have and let them to prepare us for that uh, Web 3.0, because uh, their understanding and their knowledge in this digital field uh, is uh, uh, mm, very good, they understand that knowledge, but they don't have a uh, understanding about how to systematize that knowledge, how to uh, develop that knowledge. Uh, participation and uh, cooperation with young people in this field, I think it is uh, one of uh, uh, most realistic scenarios how we as a society can survive. Because uh, if we are uh, just uh, uh, close to that um, uh, knowledge what young people have in this field, it would be very difficult uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to proceed in, in future. And uh, uh, I don't think that the educational system is ready to prepare, uh, to prepare young people for that. We need to find the ways how to po cooperate with young people. Well, I, I think that's exactly the thing. Like, we should encourage, encourage young people as aside from the educational system to devote themselves to to web 3.0 tools it doesn't have to be with educational system uh, i think that w you could also argue and uh, really uh, empower young people to do this it doesn't have to be the schools like <coughs> we should like uh, have non formal education or other organization like ngos help with that because it will tremendously help you uh, because it's here to it will it will come eventually so why not uh, being already prepared or at least combine what could happen mm -hmm. with the web 2.0 yeah it, yeah yeah, that is, and, and uh, I agree totally with you uh, that uh, three Web 3.0, it is the future we are going. If, if, if I need to answer the question, if that concept Web 2.0 is outdated, uh, no concept can be outdated I if it characterizes some kind of phenomenon, and that Web 2.0 uh, characterizes that moment of development, so it can be used, but it can be used properly uh, for situation and talking about different possible ways how we can work together with young people there can be very different scenarios and I, 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 I think that one of the uh, main problems uh, can be related that we are thinking about it somehow very framed and not going out of that going out of box is also outdated concept but somehow we need to, to try to do it and uh, I can uh, tell one one of uh, my uh, own examples not not meaning that it was going out of box it just happened and were based on situation when uh, I was still working in uh, uh, Latvia at the uh, University of Latvia we needed to do one research uh, about uh, media literacy it was um, uh, research uh, funded by Ministry of Culture and uh, and uh, that idea is that we need to identify what young people are, uh, what kind of media they are using and what kind of media literacy they need. And, uh, and uh, uh, I was ahead of that research group and I realized that actually that uh, I feel very helpless because I, I don't know anything about how young people are, are acting. No, of course I know, I can see that they, they have phones and they, they have some platforms. It was in 2017 and I was teaching uh, uh, media research methods at uh, Latvian University for uh, uh, m multimedia students and uh, 
I invited them in our study class to work together on uh, developing uh, that uh, research and uh, we worked in the way that uh, they were interviewing uh, they were interviewing uh, their younger siblings or uh, younger friends about what they are doing in the internet, what kind of activities they are doing. And we created together uh, that research uh, proposal with uh, two students being uh, 19, 20 years old, uh, and actually we managed that uh, that study. It was quantitative study. Still, we can see research results in in uh, uh, in internet. And uh, based on that study, there were uh, suggestions uh, uh, provided for Ministry of Education how to change curriculum related to media literacy in schools. And uh, that was a research actually only available research in Latvia about what kind of media young people are using and that research was used, uh, study research results were used also in media planning agencies in uh, commercial world to understand what kind of platforms are, you are used. One interesting thing what they suggested me, what I would never do as a, as a mm, representative of my generation, they suggested in that time involve in, uh, in that research as a topic about musically. Do you know what is musically and you know who bought musically? TikTok in that time, TikTok was not at all in 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 agenda, and they suggested to include that musically as a platform what, what we are researching, and uh, we did it based on their suggestions. And actually, after few weeks, f not few weeks, but few years, that uh, uh, musically was bought by TikTok, and we could see how what was that influence there, which means that uh, they were very proud. My students were very proud every time when they could see that uh, about that study there is a public discussion in the in the uh, media and that the uh, ministry of education is uh, pronouncing that there will be new policies related to that it was not like a very conventional way how to in in influence policy uh, making but still uh, some political decisions were changed uh, because young people were involved in process uh, I think that thinking about different kind of ways and uh, and I can promote just that idea to do research together with young people and to value their knowledge, to value uh, what they have and to try to identify how to join that knowledge uh, uh, together what young people have. It was a question what you asked Reta when, when Reta presented, how we can join that knowledge what young people have together with elder generation. It is a question because we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, knowledge as a, as a educators, as a youth workers, as, a, as a also policy makers, but how to join what we have and how to respect them and how to find the ways how to, how to proceed. I think it is very, very challenging, but I can see that our workshop, our seminar <laughs> is a good, good way how to also do things together and that we will create uh, some ideas of great digital solutions, your dream solutions, what can uh, serve also as idea for, for future. Somehow like that? Some more questions? Or now it's time for uh, working for you, yeah? yeah. <laughs>